Thank you for coming to this Requiem Mass. First of all, a little few notes. Why am I wearing black? A lot of churches today wear white for a funeral. This is a Requiem. We're wearing black because somebody died. All right, and we're concerned about that person where the emphasis, it seems today, is on the people in the pews. I think we need to be concentrating that there's a dead body in our presence. And we need to be paying attention that he may still need our help. And that's why we're wearing black, to remind ourselves it's okay to think about the dead, but also to mourn the loss of a loved one. I think it's healthy to mourn the loss of a loved one. Thus, we wear black to remind us that Lawrence has died and may still need our prayers. Also, I want to thank you, the family, for this proper burial of Lawrence. If you're wise, you will let your family know and put it in your will that you would like such a funeral yourself or requiem. Many people are burying their dead, their loved ones, wrongly today. They just quickly go burn them, throw them in the ground, get them out of here. I want to think about it. They will suffer much for that. But Father, you may say, this costs a lot of money. This is a very good use of money. This is a work of mercy, and it's an act of charity, and we need to be doing this. It's a good use of money to bury the dead today when so many are neglecting this great work. When you're on the other side, you will understand what I just said is true, that maybe we should have had more funerals, more proper burials. I am the resurrection and the life we heard in the gospel. He who believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. As Christians, as people who not only profess Jesus to be the Christ, but also as people who strive to organize their whole life around the commandments of our blessed Lord and receive his so holy sacraments well, we must never forget we have renounced this world We took vows at our baptism to reject Satan, who is the prince of this world, to reject his false promises and all the glitter and glamour this world has to offer. Our Lord said to Pilate, My kingdom is not of this world. St. Paul exclaims in Hebrews, We have not here a lasting city, but we seek one that is to come. Christians are exiles. That's what this means. We are sojourners in a foreign land. We're aliens in this world. As exiles, we will someday be called to return home. Our exile will have an end. To make it home, however, we have to leave this city, this earthly dwelling behind. To go home, we have to leave our body behind as a major portion of the price required to purchase the ticket. Are we ready? Are we ready? When visiting a foreign land, we are often impressed with various things we experience, but eventually it gets old, doesn't it? We realize that we're not at home. We do not fit there, no matter how hard we try. When we think of home, that is, when we think of heaven, We know with the assurance that only faith can provide that a countless host of intimate friends await us there, loved ones by grace more than by blood. Innumerable holy men and women and children live there, all longing for us to come home. Even though they are saved for all eternity, they are still very interested is still very interested and concerned for us in our exile in this veil of tears below. Oh, what a joy it will be to join their ranks, to see them, to know each of them 
and they us. Listen to these profound words of St. Catherine of Siena. When the soul arrives at eternal life, all participate in the good of that soul. And the soul participates in their good. They have an exultation, a mirthfulness, a jubilee, a joyousness in themselves, which is refreshed by the knowledge that they have found in that soul. St. Catherine, in her dialogue, she also points out what love a soul possesses when coming to heaven will be added to the universal good and is shared by all the angels and the saints. So we can say very easily, oh, how delightful is our true home after the purifying fires of this life and the purgatory in the next. In seeing God face to face, there's no more sinning, there's no more fear, no more guilt, no more debts, no more sorrow or death. O oh, supreme and endless bliss of everlasting life, when will you be ours? There, the radiant company of the angels will come to meet us. The assembly of the apostles, our judges, will welcome us. The victorious army of martyrs will greet us. The glittering throng of confessors, bright as lilies, will gather about us. The glorious choir of virgins will receive us. The patriarchs and prophets will enfold us in their embrace of blessed peace. That comes from some of the prayers you say for the dying. The Blessed Mother will smile upon us, and the Blessed Lord, His Majesty, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, will recognize us and assign us a place forever among those who stand before Him. To reach such a place, we must do what they did, turn our sins into fertilizer through repentance and conversion and obey God by turning our paltry earthly treasure into heavenly treasure. What does our heavenly bank account look like, I wonder? Is there anything in it? Have we traded on God's market? What kind of coin does he use, we might ask? Suffering, sacrifices, charity, lovingly suffering and sacrifices, lovingly embraced, are the most desired coin in the stock market and the savings of God. Make no mistake, our blessed Lord and his holy mother and all the saints know well how difficult this exile of ours really is. Thus the Son of God exiled himself from heaven to come down and dwell among us. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us we heard, we heard at the last gospel. He walked this earth and eventually embraced a most painful passion and death so that no suffering, no suffering of any kind experienced in this world, no death, no matter how painful, how terrible, would be too much for the Christian to bear with his help and grace. Lawrence is named after one of the greatest martyrs of the church, St. Lawrence, he was burned like a hamburger on a gridiron. And he said, you can partake now. I'm done on this side. He was enjoying his martyrdom. How is that possible? It's only possible with the grace of God. He makes it possible. Thus, for faithful Christians for two millennia now, we have faced death with courage. It's a doorway, not an end. Having died for us, he rose from the dead to destroy death and ascend into heaven and prepare a place for us in his glorious and heavenly mansions. He removed all blockages. He wanted to make sure we could make it home. And to this very day, he still sends us help. When you're in a foreign country, you want help. You're waiting for that package to come in the mail so we can call home especially in prayer, especially assisting at the Holy Mass. Today, this holy sacrifice, the renewal, the representation, the actual representation of Christ on Calvary's is offered for Lawrence. Once again, when you're on the other side, 
you're going, I think it's a good idea to have requiem masses. It's worth it. Thank God. To this very day, he sends us help. We can call home in prayer and ask for assistance, especially through the Holy Mass and in praying the rosary. He gives us letters from the home and the sacred scriptures and authoritative teachings of the church. He who hears you hears me, says the Lord. He has given us countless saints as examples of how to leave behind this world. But most of all, he gave us precious gifts from home in the sacraments. Goodies, if you want to think of them like that. Goodies from heaven. Baptism that opens the door. Confession that opens it again if we've closed it by sin. Confirmation to strengthen us to keep striving courageously. Extreme unction or anointing of the sick to help us at the last struggle. Most of all, the Eucharist is a pledge of eternal life, a foretaste of heaven, a medicine of immortality, an antidote to death, says St. Ignatius of Antioch. Nay, even food for the journey, viaticum. What is more, to help us reap the most from these gifts and even to discover the emptiness of this foreign land, God gives us time. Time in our exile and even a slow death. By doing so, he is encouraging us to long for him more fervently so that he can reward us more abundantly. It also gives others, key point, an opportunity to be charitable. I think we've lost that aspect too. Just drug him up and put him under. This is the modern attitude. Where's the charity in that? Where's the crown for the man suffering? We've taken away a possible crown for this man. Such a death should not be unwanted. That is long and suffering. For it allows one to prepare and die a holy death. Please be sure to join the church in her litany of the saints in praying to be protected from an unprepared death, which can easily become an unholy death. Now, from what I understand of our dear Lawrence, he did experience these things. He received the goodies from heaven in the sacraments. He strove to obey the law of God. He came to Sunday Mass even when it cost him dearly. He knew his exile was coming to an end and accepted his death as payment, and wanted to receive the gifts from heaven the more. And our Lord gave him strength to embrace his sufferings and have him, gave him time to say goodbyes. From all accounts, he had a Christian death, a holy death. But as we mentioned above, he very well may need our continued prayers and help to pay the rest of his debts. Isn't it true the law recognizes that someone may die and may have many debts we don't know about? Thus, there's a time period so people can claim. Well, it's the same and true in the spiritual life. You may open a drawer and he may have done something. He needs repairs. Thus, he's in purgatory to make those repairs. We can help. This is what this Mass does. That's why it's so good to be here. Please have masses said for Lawrence and remember to pray for him, especially the rosary. But also let us learn from him. Let us follow his example by seeking to be prepared for the time when our exile comes to an end. When we too will have to pay the full price of our ticket with our own death. Which must be a holy death if heaven is to be our eternal home. May perpetual light shine upon him, and may his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen.